Good day, everybody. On behalf of the Central Contra Costa Sanitary District, I'd like to welcome all of you to our ceremony today, renaming the district's environmental laboratory in the memory of the career and accomplishments of Dr. Mario M. Menasini. My name is Tad Pilecki. I am the current Central San uh, Board President. Before we introduce today's speakers, I would like to recognize some of our special guests in attendance today. From Congressman Mark DeSaline's office, we have Rebecca Barrett. From Assemblywoman Susan Bonilla's office, we have Representative uh, Jamario Jackson. From the Contra Costa County uh, Board of Supervisors, we have Mary Pifo. Uh, we have uh, representing uh, Candace Anderson from the Contra Costa County Supervisors. Uh, we have Representative uh, Jennifer Qualick. And I don't see him here yet, but I expect shortly that uh, the San Francisco uh, Bay Regional Water Board Executive o Officer Bruce Wolf will be here. And then uh, from the Contra Costa Water District, we have Betty Boltman. And from the Mountain View Sanitary District, we have uh, Stan Caldwell. Uh, from the Central Sand family, we have uh, current board president pro tem, Paul Causey. Uh, our uh, board member, Jim Nedgedley. And then we are, Mike McGill is uh, running Suck in Traffic. Uh, he's another one of our board members. He should be here shortly. We also have in the audience today our former board member, Jerry Lucy. And with us today is our general manager, Roger Bailey. Our former lab superintendent, Bupinder Dhaliwal, who worked very closely with Mario for like all 20 years that he was here. And then from the um, uh, architects of uh, the laboratory facility, we have Michael Willis and Michael Tauber here today. And last but not least, we have Mario's family and Mario's children specifically and their families. Mike Menasini, Judy Telfer, and Rick Menasini. So uh, Dr. Menasini, or Mario as we knew him, uh, was first elected to the Sanitary District Board in 1992 and served for 20 years until he retired from the board in 2012. During those 20 years, he served as board president four times. During his tenure on the board, the district received numerous awards, including uh, some of the uh, EPA's most pre prestigious awards with respect to uh, pretreatment as well as engineering or um, operations excellence. We also, on a number of occasions, received the California Water Environment State Treatment Plant and Collection System of the Year awards. And one of the uh, main awards that we're proud of, and Mario had a big part to do with that, is the uh, National Association of Clean Water Agencies Platinum Award. During his tenure, we got that award 14 consecutive years for 100% compliance with respect to our discharge permits. That is really doing something because we run, this lab runs, I don't know, 40,000, 30,000 tests a year trying to make sure that we meet those uh, requirements. Then in uh, 2007, Dr. Menasini was awarded the Local Public Service Award from the National Association of Clean Water Agencies in recognition of his long-standing commitment and support of innovative clean water programs and projects and demonstrations of a uh, and demonstration of a continuing awareness of the challenges faced by municipal wastewater treatment agencies. Mario is one of the champions of the district's new environmental laboratory, as well as the highly successful hazardous waste facility across the street. I needed to get a pitch in for that. <laughs> With his experience working in various laboratories throughout his career and his background in teaching science and writing science and chemistry textbooks, Mario understood the importance of having a state-of-the-art laboratory and how it would help advance the district's mission to protect public health and the environment. 
He spent many an hour touring labs throughout California and Oregon to get ideas for the district's non facility or for the new facility. Mario is also a strong supporter of the district's education programs, especially student programs, which was no surprise given his background and love for education. He helped develop our award winning sewer science high school wastewater program, as well as our water wizards third and elementary school uh, education programs. He was a strong advocate of environmental protection and was the co-founder of the Environmental Alliance, another group that was very helpful in educating the public about environmental issues. On a personal note, I got to work with Mario during his board tenure as a staff member here at the district. He was always interested in learning about the new trenchless technologies that we were implementing and went on many a field trip with me. One of Mario's key qualities that we as staff remember was he cared about people, the district employees, and, and his warm and caring affection showed in his interactions with everyone he met. And so uh, those are kind of uh, some initial thoughts uh, on our, our program today. I would like to introduce our first speaker, uh, and that'll be member Jim Nedgley. Oh, Mike's here? Mike, come on up. We'll let Mike go first. <clears throat> My apologies to all for being late. Uh, one of the joys of having your aging mother live where you can take care of her is you get to take her to the doctor. And, and the doctor isn't always on time, and so my schedule didn't work quite the way I'd hoped, but I'm, I'm glad I made it in time to say just a couple of things. One is I'm so proud that we have a chance uh, to honor Dr. Mario Menasini, and, and I would like to say it's immortal, but I'm not sure this building will last forever. But it's gonna last as long as we live, and I'm glad we had a chance. We have this chance to do this, and he was such a great guy. So with that, Jim. Well, I'll be uh, short-winded here because the person coming after me may be a little long-winded, and I may or may not be related to her. So I know she speaks publicly a lot better than I do. But, you know, I think it'll be the constant theme today for, you know, your father. Not only did he mentor me, he's, he was a friend of my father's, um, helped Barry, a great educator. He was a guy that really went the full circle. He wasn't just a, a high school teacher, but he was an environmentalist, he, he thought a lot about the hazardous waste facility when I first got on this board 20 years ago. And it, I think it's just so serving to remember him in this way because uh, as he pushed for this. This was his baby, not for a legacy, but for the right thing to do. And that just really spells out what Mario was. He was in it for the right reasons. He wasn't a politician, although he was on a board, and I always respected him for that. And the, he always made the decisions of the best way he made, he felt fit. So with that being said, you know, Mario is always missed here. I've missed him since he's been gone. And he, he was just a, he wasn't just a board member with me, he was also a friend. And those kinds of people are hard to come find these days. So with that, thank you, and uh, I'll pass the baton to my sister. Good morning, everyone. Mary Nedgedly Pifo here to join all of you as we celebrate and recognize a family man, a community leader, a politician, as, as my, brother, my good brother Jim said, um, an environmentalist. And I think I, I'm sort of channeling, I'm feeling my dad and I'm feeling Mario here with, with Jim. And, and I'm reading the, the, the title on the building and it's giving me chills. This isn't just a laboratory, it is an environmental laboratory. And, and that's really, really important to us today, to our future in Contra Costa, the Bay Area region, the state, the nation, and the world. That what we do in government is infrastructure, when you're talking about central sand services, but it also is protecting the world, protecting the environment, and enhancing it as we do our business. 
Mario created a family legacy as three children and, and his extended family indicate here. He was married for 65 years to his lovely wife, Barbara. I'm not near there, but I can tell you that 65 years is a legacy and a milestone in and of itself. Judy, Rick, Mike, um, I hope this day means as much to you as it does to me to represent the Contra Costa County Board of Supervisors, our Chair Candace Anderson, to celebrate your dad's life and, and how much he, he gave to us, but he's still giving. He's still living life forward and, and touching lives. He also led the creation of something that from a policy perspective has been very, very important to me, which is the pharmaceutical disposal program. And I will never forget his leadership and we continue to grow the program. We continue to find better ways to, to get pharmaceuticals out of the waste stream, out of our toilets. And it's amazing to know that pharmacies on your prescriptions still tell you that to dump your unused pharmaceuticals in the toilet, don't do it, please. It's really bad for the environment. Uh, Chairman Plecky, I do have a certificate to recognize uh, your auspicious event today. Um, but again, it's my honor and privilege to recognize Mario's leadership, his innovation, his state-of-the-art operations, the example he has set for others to follow, and most importantly, his inspiration. So thank you all for the opportunity to join you. And Mr. Chairman, uh, I will share this with you. I also have a certificate for you, but I would just like to say um, Assembly Member Susan Bonilla, she couldn't be here today because she's voting in floor session, um, but it's nice to have this event and do it with the family, so I'll read a portion of the certificate that we have for you today. In recognition of naming the Dr. Mario M. Mancini Environmental Laboratory, which commemorates the legacy of Dr. Mancini and functions as a resource to advance research and serve the people of Contra Costa County. So we thank you for your work in making this facility possible and also the family for being here as well. Thank you. At this point, we're gonna bring up Mike and Judy Telfer. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to follow her. What a bunch of great speakers. You know, this is a, uh, knowing Mario since the late 60s, great times. Um, you know, it was always fascinating. The first time I ever heard the word environment was from him. Wasn't even a word back then, as I remember. But he was writing books on that stuff way back when. And it came to light to me as time went on as this environmental movement moved on and has gone to the extent that it is today, that it really is impressive to me that he was so much a forethinker of this whole process before people were thinking about it. Also spent a lot of time with Mario. He could talk about astronomy. I'd love to sit in the backyard and show me uh, constellations and whatever, all that stuff that he knew. But it was really interesting. And when I was graduating, uh, in 1974 from UOP, one of the classes I had was an environmental study, excuse me, where I had to go study uh, the coast and do a photographic study from Oregon border all the way to San Diego. And he helped me put it together and it was like, that's when I really realized how much he really knew about stuff. Every kind of little plant, everything I could photograph, I didn't know what they were until he told me what they were. And then he kind of told me how they interacted and we put music together, put a great slideshow together, and I got an A, so it's all good. <laughs> I know, you know, he was um, very much into marine biology a lot and spent much of his early years playing trumpet and going down to the Monterey Jazz Festival as a very young man, maybe even in high school and uh, was always fascinated with these things. And he even knew Doc Ricketts. He, he, he told, taught me to read about Steinbeck. I know it sounds silly, but I never bothered to. It was very interesting uh, stuff. And the characters in there and Cannery Row and all that, so that reminds me of him a lot. Uh, he, um, 
would be extraordinarily honored with this facility and his name. It's it's very deserving. Um, knowing him and being such a scientist, <clears throat> we were all lucky to have him. And it's certainly, this this facility and uh, the Central Sanitary District for 20 years with him was a was a fabulous thing and uh, great resources for everybody. Uh, so, um, actually, I have a guy. Where are you, Hans? Come here. Hans worked for worked for me for 20 plus years. He's a uh, PhD in nuclear chemistry, and it turns out, after many years of being with this, Mario was his professor because his alma mater was UC Berkeley. And that's where he was. So I asked him, I said, why don't you come up and just say a couple words about your experience with him. He's kind of out of the, the thing here, but I wanted to do that. So thank you for this great honor. It's a wonderful thing uh, for the family and uh, all involved. Hi. I didn't realize I'm supposed to speak. I, I just came here for the refreshment. <laughs> So anyway, um, there I was in UC Berkeley working on my doctorate. And you know, when you're at UC Berkeley, it's very easy to feel that you are the, really the most stupid student in the whole world because everybody else is so much smarter than you are. So I heard about this professor that gave a lot of A's. So I kind of stepped out of my comfort zone from engineering and physical chemistry, and I signed up for his class in biochemistry. So, but, but by the second class, I realized there was something different about Dr. Manicini. Because unlike the other professors who feel that they are one step below God, <laughs> Dr. Manicini was extremely approachable, and he did one thing for us that none of the other professors did. He made us feel smart. And I was able to go forward and complete my studies and be where I am today because of professors like him. Thank you. All well, these are great speakers. Hans, thank you very much for those words. Frankly, um, as I was telling Mary early, earlier, uh, uh, a great environmentalist in her own right, and gosh, I see so many people that are wonderful. Betty Boatman, your service, years of service. But I, I think all of us in Contra Costa have come to realize how important the environment is. And Dad was a very much of a leader in that movement. Uh, frankly, uh, one of the things that he did in the middle of the 1960s was to develop a program called the National Environmental Educational Development. I don't know where he came up with that, but the acronym is NEED, and so I think he needed to felt needed. So we got need but in any event uh, it was a wonderful wonderful program he worked with uh, it was instituted by the National Park Service it was way ahead of his time and the idea was to take the environment and to teach people about chemistry and uh, biology and geometry and algebra that uh, it was around all of us it was part of our environment uh, in fact I can remember uh, going to a place called Crown Point uh, when I was only a teenager with Dad. Uh, he, somehow I ended up driving in a snowstorm, almost uh, killing an Indian woman who we had picked up along the way, and uh, quite an interesting thing. But we ended up at Crown Point, and Dad uh, found himself, and I found myself, in the process of building a Hogan. And the idea behind the Hogan was to teach the Indian children, the Navajo children, that something so important to their lives, this structure that they traditionally lived in, was filled with all kinds of really interesting things in terms of the geometry of the Hogan, the, the algebraic solutions that applied, and the biology, and all of that sort of thing, and how their lives related to the environment around them, and all the subjects that really uh, they were being taught in school. So he, this was in the middle of the 1960s. Dad would say some of his ideas were stolen, uh, maybe so. He wrote chemistry books, Hans. He wrote textbooks. I think somebody mentioned that. Action chemistry was uh, one of his textbooks. I remember uh, my brother and sister said to me, uh, hey, uh, if they're still selling this thing, how come we're not getting royalties, you know? <laughs> and uh, as it turns out, uh, the book is still
still on the market. It's it, it's just that it's been rewritten several times, and his, I think his name is now like third or fourth on the list of the co-authors. But he was an incredibly eclectic, very brilliant, complicated, passionate individual who uh, had an interesting life. He he was a local guy. He was born in Martinez on Castro Street to two Italian parents, part of the Italian American community. Uh, and, uh, you know, growing up, he was interesting. He was elected vice president of his student body, and the people that I, who have long since now passed away, unfortunately, who knew him as a fellow student knew that he cared about his fellow students. He was full of high energy, and, you know, he wanted to make things happen for his students. And he he also was a rebel, though. I mean, Dad had this rebellious streak in him. He, I, I guess I can say this. He was a liberal Democrat, uh, and if he were alive, he'd probably be voting for Bernie, just so some of you know. But uh, he uh, he had this rebel streak in him, and I, I can remember one of my uh, the great stories was he, he ended up playing football, uh, which my very pragmatic and practical grandparents would have disapproved of greatly because football foolishness was not about the serious business of living your life. He, he um, he started playing football, and, and the way my grandparents found out about it is they read about his exploits on the field, running up and down the field, and he had a lot of explaining to do because uh, they wanted to know why he wasn't sweeping out the store, which was the Menacini family store on, on Main Street. So. He was a, he was an extraordinary person. He and I, I I just want to mention a couple of things. Uh, one of the things that I know uh, Rick and I talked about this a little bit. Rick was there uh, at the last moments of his life, and he actually did talk about some of the really extraordinarily emotional things that he uh, went through. He was a he and his brother Louis joined the services uh, during World War II. Uh, Uncle Louis went off to fight in the Battle of the Bulge and in France and and dad found himself as a as a medic in Hawaii and of course uh what happened was it, it, you know and that's probably what what triggered his interest in marine biology which he later got a master's degree in marine biology but you know he was one of those guys that un, you know was taking care of the soldiers and sailors that were coming out of the Pacific and they were triaging these these fellows he didn't talk about it much you almost never heard him talk about it but they had to decide who was going to get saved who wasn't these were men uh, coming in with missing arms uh, missing legs horribly wounded and he was part of the team that that treated those individuals that came in and uh, it, it had to have been an extremely emotional experience because dad truly was somebody that cared about his fellow human beings and to watch to see that you really get to know what the cost of war and that these individuals that he treated helped treat uh, were not just numbers they were real human beings who were missing arms and legs and whatnot so that was a, an incredible experience in his life uh, he, uh, but you know, I, I got to say one last thing, and I don't want to take up too much more time. But Dad had an incredible sense of humor, and those that knew him, he knew about his wit. Uh, he he really was. He was funny. I mean, he was. He got less funny as he got older. I think. He, <laughs> I think he got. Uh, he got kind of a little bit angry about all the aches and pains he had to go through, but. You know, he really had this wonderful sense of humor, and he, you know, so he just, I think that's what carried him on in life, because he could always see the humor in things, and and uh, my brother Rick, uh, in his early years, he still is, and I'm going to get off this thing, I'm so sorry, I could go on forever, you know, it, it's just amazing, he, I, I do want to say, at Berkeley, uh, I remember being introduced to Edward Teller, I can remember, uh, uh, you know, uh, so many of the really uh, premier scientists that he knew, Glenn Seaborg out there in Orinda, of course, worked with him in terms of the uh, the Environmental Alliance and the fabulous lecture series that he had there. But he also knew people that were other interesting as well. I can remember Louis, uh, uh, Louis Biscaglia stayed at our house, and he loved Dad. Uh, you know, what the attraction was, I don't know, but, but it was pretty, I don't know if many of you know Louis Biscaglia, but incredible human being. Uh, so that was dad. He was extraordinarily eclectic. Uh, go on and say some more things about him. There's a lot of things to say, but he loved, he had passion for people, the environment, and science. And he brought those passions to the Central Sanitary District and uh, helped, I think, uh, put, put forth some of these programs. And we're all extraordinarily grateful for that. I'm extraordinarily grateful for 
the board members, Jim Nedgley, Mike McGill, and yourself. And, you know, I mean, you guys are just fantastic. The, this honor is truly something that I agree with my brother-in-law, Mike Telfer, that he deserves. But uh, more importantly, I mean, it, it symbolizes a life that was well lived. So thank you. Wow, big crowd out here. Um, I want to thank the board specifically and Elaine specifically for the great care. Feeling emotional because this is like bringing my dad back, and so it's 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 coming up. Thank you, Elaine, for all that you did, and the board in all the years of in his later years taking care of him and I don't know how many times you walked into the house and the kitchen table was full of the Central Sanitary District uh, agenda and he prepared and participated and loved being a part of it and when his eyesight start started to fail and Elaine would provide materials that had enlarged um, lettering and words and font and he just continued on, never skipped a beat. That was my dad. He never skipped a beat. And I helped him in the last number of months of his life and became the reader of the agenda. And we would sit at the table and we would get him prepared and and off he'd go and and uh, make sure that his his central sand stuff was on straight and the cab would pick him up because you guys central sand really took him in as a human being and not only all of his accomplishment but you appreciated him as a person and I want to thank you for that um, as a little kid, five, six, seven years old. Um, Dad was working on his master's from UOP and the UOP Marine Station was at Dillon's Beach at Tomales Bay. And some of the first things I can remember was going into that laboratory with uh, Dr. Babcock and there were tanks and, and formaldehyde and creatures bubbling and, and he was at home there. So I, I can't think of anything more fitting than a laboratory named after my dad. He loved being in a lab and was in a laboratory a great part of his life, teaching physiology at Los Lomas and, and um, stuff that he did at a lot of universities in the area, uh, UC Davis and Cal and, and San Francisco State. and creating uh, his environmental company need and he loved to teach he loved to be in the lab and I would think because of the the way my dad loved life that there is a touch of his earth spirit still around and I want to thank Central San for providing a place in case he's floating around, that he can come roost at the laboratory here. Thank you. All right, last but not least, I wanna thank you for coming. This is a great honor for my father to receive the ultimate plaque. My dad received lots and lots of awards through his lifetime. I'm sure th there were hundreds, but this, this is the ultimate plaque to have your name on a, on a laboratory building. Such a great tribute to my father's life. <clears throat> For my dad, this is very fitting because early in his life, he worked in a lab and him and his coworker actually <clears throat> seriously considered buying the lab business. Then he took a, a job as a chemistry teacher in Willits and had a lab there. He worked in the Willits Hospital Lab, then was a chemistry teacher at Los Alamos and had a lab there, as well as working in the Kaiser Lab. He worked for the Far Western Laboratories Educational Research Center 
and ultimately re received a national award for introducing bacteria to help clean water for the Central Contra Costa Sanitary District Lab. It really does seem fitting that he should have his name on a laboratory. I have to say my dad was always prepared for his board meetings. For years and years, the manuscript, as we called them, these huge thick binders, would sit on the kitchen table. And my dad would pour over them. And when he got macular degeneration, my mom tirelessly read them for hours, as well as my brother. Even in his older years, my dad didn't miss a note. He studied the projects and he took his board position very seriously. My dad was a great man, and I'm very, very proud to be his daughter. He stood with me in my darkest hours, especially with Nicole. We were the A-team. Thank you for bestowing a great honor on my father, and in my dad's words, embrace life like a tiger. Uh, at this point, if I could have Jim and Paul and Jerry come, come on up. I might be already up here. October 15th of last year, uh, our board uh, approved a resolution recognizing uh, Mario's contributions, and today we're officially renaming the lab to the Dr. Mario M. Minnesini Environmental Laboratory. Now that, this uh, actually concludes our formal program, but we invite you to join us in our multi-purpose room just down across the parking lot here where we'll be having some refreshments and you'll be able to have an opportunity to, to network a little bit more. And after that, for those that are interested, we'll be offering tours of the laboratory itself. So you're more than welcome to participate. Thank you.